Hey, this is Eric from Catching Light. Hey, this is Hemp. Hey, this is Glenn. Hi, I'm Steve-O. Hey, this is Drew Hines with Hindsight Imagery. This is Matt Callahan and Digimati Photographic Services. Hey, this is Jason, and welcome to Tales from the Pit. Hello and welcome to Tales from the Pit, where we go behind the lens for the entertainment world and the creative people involved. Today is our part two with photographer Matt Kennedy. We hope you enjoy the episode. So moving forward, I mean, we're getting, we're starting to get up into the, the big name. I mean, these are all big names, but we're talking about the LucasArts and Marvel and all that stuff. But Fate of the Furious, you were still f- photographer on Fate of the Furious, which is mm-hmm. 2017, right? Well, that's yeah. when it was released anyways yeah i think yeah i think 2016 when we shot it yeah somewhere around there yeah um, and that's and that's the one where uh no wait a minute no paul paul passed away on the, the seven. seven yeah yeah, yeah, seven. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. sorry yeah yeah so yeah and, and you know that's just another huge i'm assuming big budget you know explosions everywhere and all that stuff what, yeah it's it, ridiculous it, yeah yeah any any anything about that one that stands out well, we got to go to Cuba. That was pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah, Cuba was great. And that was like uh, another movie in itself because there's no infrastructure for filmmaking in Cuba. Not oh, wow. Certainly not on that level. So, you know, we had everything in Havana. I mean, we had, you know, picture cars, the motorcycles. We had camera bikes, helicopter, you know, helicopters with cameras, uh, pursuit arms, any kind of mobile way to move a camera for like high speed car chases we had down there. And, you know, we had first and second unit there. I mean, it was nuts. And certainly nobody in Cuba had ever seen anything like that, but you know, they had to barge everything down. Yeah. You know, so uh, it was, it was crazy. So that was really, that was probably the coolest part of that movie was going to Cuba. Are you traveling with the full team or are you just go like, I got to be there on certain dates. You just go whenever are you, or is it the whole crew travels together? Yeah. The whole crew travels together yeah. usually. Yeah. So I think we chartered a plane for that one just because getting in and out of Cuba, at least going, when we were done in Cuba, we went to Atlanta to finish the movie for like another 10 or 15 weeks. I don't know, whatever. Uh, so yeah, the whole crew traveled back on a charter. Wow. So That's awesome. yeah, that was like a lot of fun. I mean, you know, being able to be involved with the entertainment world and all that exciting stuff and doing what you love specifically, you know, photography, that sounds like a lot of fun. It can be for sure. <laughs> I'm sure it's very tiring also. <laughs> it's tiring. And it's, it's, uh, I mean, I try to stay as grounded as I can. It's certainly not as glamorous as a lot of people think it is. Uh, I don't think until you're in it, you really understand, you know, yep. but yeah. It, it's pretty it's pretty fun and i i try to remind myself that it's still interesting to people <laughs> that don't do it and uh yep. you know i guess it's just that whole mystique and glamour about movies you know it's always been there i think for people so yep no is there i mean you've done a lot of television shows uh you know picard and stuff like that is there any major difference from television versus feature films for you? Yeah. I mean, I never wanted to do television. Uh, It's just a grind and they don't, they don't actually carry a photographer for the entire show. I mean, they do, but it's not, you're not there every day at production. Right. So a lot of times a photographer will come out like one or two days an episode. Yeah. And so there's people that slowly make a living at shooting television. So they'll, you know, Monday, Tuesday, they'll do this show. And then, you know, Thursday, Friday, they'll do this show. And I just don't like that. I like to be embedded for the whole thing to where the cast is comfortable with you and the crew is comfortable with you. Yeah. And besides like rates and hours, then yeah, TVs, it's less, I guess it's on the, it's lower than features. Yep. But I'd like to work on a movie for three to six months and then take some time off, you know? Yep. So, yeah, yeah, that's that's a lot of that's cool. How does that 
it's specifically with your family. I mean, you mentioned you have uh, kids and stuff. How does, yeah. how does this impact your family or how does that dynamic work with you traveling and stuff like that? Well, it's tough. I mean, my kid, I have a 20 year old daughter and a 17 year old son now, so they're, <laughs> they don't know any different. I mean, they've been yeah. coming to set since they were like two. Yep. Um, I think now it's probably harder on me to go away. Mm-hmm. They have, they have their lives, you know, their, their school, their jobs, their girlfriends, boyfriends, whatever, all their friends. So, but we try to make a point that they come out on every location job that I do at some point, you know, and we nice. can hang out. And if it's close enough, and it's long enough, then, you know, I'll try to come home every once in a while when I can over a weekend or something like that. But yeah, it's tough. I mean, my wife was in the industry before we met and she hated okay. it, Yeah, oh, hated really? it, but she oh, understands really? it. So that's kind of, kind of crucial. Um, and so we kind of made that conscious choice. You know, when we had kids that, you know, she would, she would be the one to stick around, you know, and I would travel. And I tried not to travel as much when they were little, you know? Yeah. Um, and there was a lot more work in LA then. So it was easier to stay home. You know, you weren't missing out on a lot of stuff and now it's just all over the place. So. Um, yeah. And I, you know, I think Atlanta is a pretty hot spot right now. It is. Stuff, yeah. So. And they, you know, like they have wanderlust. I mean, my kids, I don't know, they've been to like 20 countries, you know, it's like they, they love to travel, you know, so they love it. So no matter, although they do say, can I get a job somewhere other than Atlanta? Cause they're tired of going to Atlanta, <laughs> but you know, it's uh, they got to go to new England this last fall. So that was fun. You know, they like oh, right. so, what part of new England we were in Rhode Island. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. I'm in Portland, Good. Maine right now. Yeah. You're in Maine. Yeah. Yep. 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 A lot of snow right now. Um, not a lot, but <laughs> nope. man, today was the coldest day since 2018. So it really? was a cold one today. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't, you know, I, I, today's the day I'd, I'd like to be in Atlanta. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I hear you. So, so you've got all these cool stuff that you've done. I mean, really, really cool stuff. And then you get these major, major Marvel. How, how do you get involved with the Marvel stuff? First of all, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, I think my first introduction was, uh, with, what was, uh, Agent Carter. It was a TV show. Okay. Yep. yep. Yeah. So I was hired to do a couple episodes of that. And Mm then, um, it just kind of, that kind of gets your foot in the, in the door. And then, uh, so they know, they know your name, they know who you are. And then I think, well, I guess Black Panther was probably the next thing, but I had worked with Chadwick on a prior movie. Oh, you did. Okay. And, And so we had kind of a nice relationship. He was a great guy. And, uh, the kind of the moons just aligned on that. Marvel wanted to try me on a, on a movie and I had worked with Chad before. So that just kind of lined up on that one. Wow. And, and, and then, you know, obviously rest in peace, Chad. I mean, he, yeah. that, that dude no, was, he was one of the best. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I love what I love his work. Yeah. Uh, and it was very shocking, obviously. Yeah. But yeah. I, yeah. So you start with black Panther and that's, I mean, I, I'm assuming I mean, if I remember correctly, that was like one of the biggest Marvel movies up to that went on that release or something crazy. Like they had some record yeah. numbers or something like that. Yeah, I think it was a probably a billion dollar movie when it was all said and done. Yeah. Right. And then I think the Avengers in game and Infinity Wars, all that came out and kind of topped it. But yeah, I mean it was a it was a great project. It was a great cast. We all kind of knew we were doing something that nobody had ever seen before. You know, it was different than any other Marvel film. And I think like any, any kind of film, it's all about timing. You know, it, I think it just hit at the right time socially and politically and just, you know, it, it just kind of touched on so many different places, Yep. you know, and people loved it. And uh, it was really, it was really cool to be a part of that first one. Yeah. And, and you, and you had mentioned that the, the Marvel and the LucasArts, they have a very different workflow. Uh, is, is that, did you have to kind of re, adjust how you normally did stuff to meet their needs or anything like that? Not really. I mean, I would just, the only adjustment was kind of probably the editing process. They just want it quicker, you know, Mm -hmm. and even it depends on, it really depends on the project. And I know the security people at Marvel. And so, you know, they're a little less militant now, I guess, you know, it's like, Hey, you know, we'll get you a drive every three days or something like that. And they, they, trust you you know and sure yeah. obviously they wouldn't keep calling you if, if that wasn't the case but yeah I, that, there really wasn't much of, a, of an adjustment as far as how you 
shoot and operate and things like that. So that's awesome. I mean, yeah, that was such a great movie. And that then you, uh, Captain Marvel was the next one. It looks like. Yeah, I did the second unit on that. So just yep. you know, there was a whole sequence with Bree on the train. So I did that part of it. So nice. Yeah. So are you are you actually in any of the movies? Do they have you as like no. in the background or anything no, like not, that? Extras? No, not on purpose anyway. I don't think <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, not so far. I've been asked a couple of times to be on camera as like a photographer, a wedding photographer. Like, right. I don't know. I'm behind the camera for a reason. <laughs> right, right, so right. I, maybe I, one yeah. of these days, who knows? Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, those are major movies. I, I ass, I'm just assuming that you having a Marvel movie on your resume can kind of give you a lot more, you know, I, I relief don't know. Or, or, or something. I mean, I, I, you know, people, I, I'm really impressed. People say that. And I don't, I don't know if it matters or not quite honestly. Really? I think it certainly matters with Marvel. Cause then, you know, obviously you did Panther and Captain Marvel and then, you know, I did no way home. So that was right. a little, you're already part of the Marvel family, blah, blah, blah. And then we did, you know, LA stuff on, uh, Dr. Strange. And then, so it helps internally like that. But I, I honestly, I think after I, after black Panther came out, I don't think anybody called me for like six months. Oh, wow. So I was like, what the hell, man? I have like the biggest movie out and, you know, and, I'm kind of going through that now. Like nobody's called me after Spider-Man. <laughs> so it's, I don't know if it makes a difference. I'm sure it does at some point. Um, I think it kind of solidifies that, you know, you can do big budget movies. You can work with huge ensemble casts. Right. You know, obviously if they're, if they're happy with the, the content and the key art and the posters and it, whatever you did for that project, then yes, I think somebody somewhere will see that and you know it may be the thing that puts you ahead of the other guys i don't know yeah but i honestly i i try to treat every job as like it's my last one and i'm kind of shocked when people still call me for jobs i just i don't want to be that guy you know yeah, like, yeah. oh I, I did this but you know you know you should be calling me because <laughs> uh, i don't know I, it's just you can this business will it'll drop you as quickly as it puts you up, you know? So yeah, absolutely. I, I yeah, you gotta be, you know, humbly and respectful and everything. And, you know, I just think your work is so impressive, you know, all of the stuff you've done. And, and I haven't even talked about your actual physical photos. I mean, you've got some awesome, awesome photos, uh, not just of cool people doing cool things, but they're well shot. Well, your con, you know, your, your composition, all that stuff is really, really cool. I, I think you got some really, really awesome stuff. I try. Now, <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, obviously you're doing it well. So I, oh, think, I think that's great. The, when it comes, so you've done, as you just said, the Spider-Man No Way Home, which yeah. just came out, what, a couple months ago, whatever it was. Um, yeah, about a month, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Again, an amazing movie. So stuff like that, you're shooting some stuff that like everybody is waiting for. Are you, and you know, I, I know you can't say things, but are you able to view the story and stuff like that? So you're like, holy cow, this is going to blow everyone's mind or anything like that? Or are you just kind of just uh, day by day, like, I don't know what the heck's going on here? <laughs> well, so that one, I didn't get to read the script. Marvel yeah. stuff, you don't usually get to read the script. Right. I mean, they only let a handful of people actually read it. But we kind of, you know, by talking to people on set, you kind of figure out what's going on. We know who's in it, obviously, because, you know, I have to work with them and photograph them. So, yeah, on that one, there were a lot of big spoilers. And obviously, you know, you're not telling anybody and you know, I mean, the amount of NDAs we have to sign. Yeah. You know, and especially being someone, one of the few people on set that, you know, is capturing content. You know, they want to make sure that it's super locked down. Uh, and there were stills that we weren't even sharing with the lab because they didn't want anybody to get a peek at what we were doing, you know? So it was really, yeah, it was cool. It was cool to see all of it. And, you know, there's so much CG added to, like, I don't even know what the end product's going to look like for some of those scenes. Right. Kind of have an idea, you know, but, you know, and that's the other thing is you just kind of have to be open and, and kind of shoot everything. There's a, which I'm really glad they used for that film was, I mean, cause we did a, I did a whole poster shoot for that on another day aside from the unit photography and they used some of it, 
but we did some really cool stuff that we'll never see the light of day. You know, it was a big bummer, but there was one poster that came out. I think it was a Russian poster. It's Tom sitting like on a ledge looking over Times Square with his back to us. And that was just in between takes. He was kind of sitting there like in the zone, you know, he's exhausted. It's a really heavy emotional scene. And he just kind of was slumped over. And I just thought it was, and it was against a blue screen. And I was like, that's such a powerful image without anything in it. And so I shot it. So at that one, I was really happy to see that they used that for a poster. Cause I, I think it was probably one of the better posters that they put out for that. Yeah. Um, but you know, that's the other thing people are like, Oh, you know, why do you shoot blue screen? It's, you know, there's nothing there. I'm like, yeah, but you don't know what could be there. Right. You can you do know? anything with that. Yeah. So you got to capture those moments too, you know? So are you like, are you allowed to interact with the actors or anything like, Hey, turn your head to the left or anything like that. Or are you just strictly capturing what's happening? Yeah. Not during a scene. No. Well, you're, yeah, you're, yeah. yeah. You're obviously just a fly on a wall, but if you see something cool and you have a relationship with the actor, I mean, some actors are more open to that than others, you know? So a lot of times you're kind of, you know, doing it on the sly. And if you think there's a cool thing, or maybe if you talk to them and say, Hey, this, this is really cool. Do you mind like, you know, holding this pose or doing this. And, and a lot of times some of them will do it, you know? Yeah. So not all of them, but you know, and then obviously during a, a poster shoot, yeah, you can kind of you pose them however you want. And, and yeah. Do yeah. Like that. But yeah. But to me, that's also, so some photographers, they would rather, if they can't get in on a take, they would ask for a setup. And to okay. me, that feels really manufactured. Yep. Um, I feel like the best images are during the take because that's mm -hmm. when they're like given their all and that's the performance. That's the emotion. That's the action, whatever it is, they're never going to do it exactly like that for you on a setup. So if it's something the studio really wants and I can't get it, yeah, I'll ask for a setup. Um, but I, I really like to capture it, you know, during a take. Yep. And there's some filmmakers that are like, you know, this is super heavy. Like we don't want any stills during this take. And then when they're done, they're like, okay, do a take for stills. The camera will move and I'll be able to get in there and the actor will do one take just for me. Wow. So it just depends. It depends on the people that you're working with, you know. All right. All right. So, like when you talked about the poster stuff, and I don't want to say anything specifically for Spider-Man because I know that some people haven't said I don't want to spoil oh, right. anything. There's right. some, I mean, that, that, that's uh, it's just so awesome what was done in that mo movie. But with the poster stuff, is that something that was planned ahead of time or is it just kind of, Oh yeah. And I, no. uh, okay. No, they're always planned. So that's not actually part of production. It's mm -hmm. part of the studio's marketing campaign. Right. So they will have, um, whatever ad agency they're working with, they'll come up with concepts so they could have, Oh man, I don't know how many concepts they'll have a lookbook of concepts of, you know, it's artwork, basically renderings and drawings or comps. Yeah they want the posters possibly to be. So we'll run through those. We'll, first of all, the actors will approve. Okay, I'll do that concept, that one, that one. I won't do that one. And then they'll send me a book of lighting references, how, you know, it's how they want it lit, you know. And so we'll have all these things to work with. And then, you know, we'll usually do a pre-light day. And Are you? We'll, we'll shoot as much as we can. Are you lighting it yourself or are you just letting the gaffers and all those? No, do? I'm lighting it. Oh, yeah. really? Okay. So, yeah. So I'll, you know, obviously hire like a first assistant and they'll have probably another assistant and then we'll have a Digitech. Um, and I'm, so I'm more visual than I am like strobe proficient. I, I know <laughs> how to work with strobes, but yep. it's completely like a different type of photography, as you well know, uh, yep. as far as capturing things live. Um, so once I know how they want it lit, how I want to light it, I'll do, I'll do lighting gram, the diagrams, I'll draw them out. So actor here, I want my key here, my fill here, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, I want this to be, you know, a bi tube or a strip or whatever it is. And I'll draw it all out and then I'll hand it to my first assistant. And like, this is our jumping off point. And then that's kind of what we do. We build it from that diagram and then we'll just get to work, you know, with the stand in, you know, chiseling out the way it looks. And then sometimes that's how we shoot it. And other times it completely changes on the day. It really just depends. I mean, we did some really killer stuff on Spider-Man with all the good guys and all the bad guys with a single light and a bounce. Oh, cool. It was just super dark and moody. 
and the director was into it and they never used any of it. <laughs> uh, are you so bummed? Are you allowed to share any of your stuff? Uh, uh, probably not. Uh, no, because no, they, you know, they own everything. So if yeah. they don't want it to see the light of day, I mean, you hope one day that it will at some point, you know, maybe they'll do a photo book or something. Yeah. Um, I'm usually the last person to find out when images are released. So, you know, it's well, always, no, yeah. <laughs> it's just funny because I'll see something posted. I'm like, oh, I didn't know they released that. And then I'll repost it and then it's old news. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so you could post it after it's been released possibly. Yeah. Depending. And, and yeah. they'll give me a lot of times the publicity team will give me a link because they'll have a link okay. for, uh, you know, press kits and things like that. Like these are the approved images, domestic release, you know, you can post these or you can share these. And it's usually the same like six images that all the entertainment magazines and websites pick up. So, yeah. 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 That's awesome though. Yeah. I, you know, you know, just my opinion, suspecting, I suspect that the, that cool images you're talking about because of the people in that images, I suspect it'll turn up someday. I would hope so. It's yeah. so cool. I mean, I haven't, I obviously haven't seen it, but, I just know who's in it, and I just think that would be an amazing shot. Yeah, no, they yeah. were pretty fun. I was yeah, really happy cool. with it. So, the um, we're probably going to get into territory where you cannot talk about anything yet, but you have <laughs> uh, done work with the new Doctor Strange Met Multiverse of Madness. Yep. Uh, I assume you can't talk about anything there. No, I think uh, yeah, because the majority of that was shot in London. And so yep. they had a, a photographer over there and then they came to Los Angeles and they had like, I don't know, four to six weeks of additional photography. So I did oh, cool. the LA portion, most of it, but yeah, I can't, can't talk about that one. And then the next one you can't talk about, which I'm super interested to <laughs> is Obi-Wan Kenobi, the right. series. Yeah. Um, and that's, I don't know when that, I have no idea when that's, I, I think, I, I think they just released a trailer or something like that recently. Did they? Oh yeah. I don't uh, know. I saw something. I don't remember what it was. I, I'm trying to last remember. I heard uh, 4th of July is the release date for that one. For the show or for the trailer? For the show. For the show. Okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm in the middle. I just started watching the, um, the, uh, what you call it? Um, oh, book of Boba, Boba, Fett. Boba, Boba yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I just started that. So yeah, Sam. Uh, oh, no, no. It's on uh, Disney+. Plus. They have something on like a sneak peek of the Obi-Wan where it's just like you and McGregor talking about, you know, getting back uh, into the role or something like that, uh, okay. I think is what it is. Yeah. Okay. Like a minute, minute <clears throat> gotcha. thing or something like that. So anyways, you're doing, are you still working on that or is that done? No, Obi we finished Obi that in September last year. Yeah, we finished Were that. you involved with the entire episodes or can you say anything like that? Yeah, so it's essentially it's uh, it, yeah, it's a miniseries. It's a six-hour movie, yep. pretty much. You know, six-part yep. six-part movie. I don't know if they're right. hour episodes. Um, so yeah, I was there every day from start to finish. Wow, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. So uh, there's always there's two photographers. So I was the unit photographer, and then there's a franchise photographer who basically has a studio set up, uh, and they just march everybody through there. Oh really? Oh okay. Uh, oh, for wow, like action figures and you know, <laughs> stuff like yep. that. So. Yeah, and that's a whole other. Like I thought, Marvel was crazy. Like Lucasfilm is, they're a whole other level. <laughs> so, what, what's that? So, what's the experience? I mean, I'm sure it's all awesome, but what do you have to adjust for the Lucasfilm with your works? I think it's just. I mean, coming out of the Marvel world, it wasn't really. It's kind of still family. It's all under the Disney umbrella, you know. And uh, they're just. I. I mean, I don't want my Marvel friends of his, but they're a little tighter on security. Like they're, yeah. they run a really tight ship. Like, you know, it's uh, kind of, you know, give them content every day kind of thing. But the, the amount of security on set is more than I've ever seen on any Marvel movie. You know, I mean, we were shooting on sound stages for most of that. And, you know, there's at least a security guy at every door. There's a two or three on set at all times. And if you don't have the proper credentials to take photos, then you know yeah you need to get it sorted and get them if you need them you know so which i appreciate you know because it keeps people from leaking stuff even though it still happens not so much on the star wars stuff i don't think but yep. um yeah they they're they're super tight as far as the security and you yep. know how everything's monitored and controlled so 
Yeah, definitely understandable. I mean, those are gigantic franchises. I mean, yeah, and I really appreciate that as a viewer too because yeah. I miss like the days when I was a little kid where you if if you were lucky you got to see a trailer maybe like two weeks before the movie came out. Right. Like, I I don't want to know what's going on like six to twelve months before it comes out. I mean, I like to be surprised. I like to yeah. to see the movie and experience it. You know, I don't need to know what color sneakers Tom Holland's wearing. You know, I mean, it's just, it blows my mind, like the amount of just stuff on the internet about all this stuff. Yep. I mean, it keeps us all employed, but, uh, you know, <laughs> I, it's just, it's crazy. So, you know, to not know what's going on and, you know, even for them to hide a lot of the secrets from the viewers, I think is really cool. And I think yep. secretly the viewers appreciate it too, especially Absolutely. the fans. Yep. You know, it's just that they're just rabid, man, for content. It's nuts. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I think, you know, and, and they, they've got it down, but I really think that going into this movie, such as the Spider-Man movie, and just having your mind blown, and then after the fact, you go online, you read about all these little hidden Easter eggs and things like that, that yeah. you're like, oh, my God, I didn't even catch that. And then you get to go back and kind of watch it again. All that yeah, stuff's awesome. because you're, you're buying another ticket, man. <laughs> you're going back, you know? I think my I am, son's seen it three times already. So, yeah. you know, it's pretty funny. How does, how does that affect you? I mean, because you are involved with it. So, obviously... Are you still like when you go watch Spider Man? Are you still surprised, or you're like, oh, I kind of knew this was happening, or I had no clue on that? I mean, you you have an overall idea of what's happening, um, yeah. and like I said, a lot of the scenes that we shot were only partial sets, or you know, and the rest was CG. So yeah, I'm just as surprised, you know. And we don't shoot it linear, you know; it's all out of order. Oh right, and, yeah, and then. So to see the final cut with the music and all the, the visual effects, it was really cool. Yeah, no, I really enjoyed it. And, you know, the first time we saw it, uh, to watch it with, like, there were true fans there because they screamed and clapped at all the right parts, you know. And so it was kind of cool to, you know, to see that, that, you know, we kind of did it right and people were excited about it. Um, the, yeah. I could watch the certain section of the movie like all day long when the certain individuals are together for the first time talking. Yeah. I can just watch that banter all day yeah, long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was fun. I mean, you know, and we shot a lot of stuff that didn't make it into the movie. And oh, then really? there, yeah. there were stuff that was shot after the fact, like I think they did a couple weeks of reshoots because uh, they had pieces that they needed to fill this cut or that cut. And I wasn't involved for any of that. So there were a couple things in there that I hadn't seen. So oh, you know, that, nice. that was kind of, that was kind of cool too. So, cool. but yeah, I think it's just, it's cool to, I mean, there's so many people involved in that from pre-production to post-production. It's just kind of cool to see the final product, you know? So um, what, what was the last, uh, last production you worked on or can you even say? Yeah. I mean, it was in new England. We, I did a uh, hocus pocus too. <laughs> oh really? <Yeah. laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't talk about that one either. But uh, yeah, that was the last production I did. Yeah. Nice, nice. Okay, cool. Yeah. When uh, when it's time for you, and you kind of mentioned this earlier, when you need to just take a break and cleanse your palate, what's what's your hobbies besides this stuff? Oh man, you know, I just uh, right now I'm kind of in the mode of just kind of chilling and, and taking care of business around the house. You know, there's a honeydew list never goes away. Yeah. Uh, especially, you know, when you're on location, uh, hanging out with my kids, you know, my son and I like to surf. So we, we surf. That's kind of like my main hobby, I guess. And just, uh, you know, hanging with the dogs and my daughter, we go do stuff when she has time. And that's kind of it really. I'm, I don't have much of a social life. Uh, most of my friends, are in the industry and, okay. and you know, you, you work with them all the time and it's kind of like a second family and it's kind of weird, but I don't have too many friends outside of the industry anymore. And it's, I mean, I'm never around, you know, right. so it's hard right. enough to maintain some sort of family life yep. that, uh, yeah, I just don't, I don't do much with other people. <laughs> I kind of sound like an old hermit, but you know, I just, yeah, I'm just kind of all about, you know, the surfing and just kind of hanging out at home. I like to watch the history channel and national geographic and, yep. or catch up on movies or, you know, and just kind what, of 
decompress. What are you watching right now for, you know, series and all that stuff? Anything spe- specific? Oh, man, I'm such a nerd. I'm really into the Curse of Oak Island. I don't know. Oh, that's okay. like my thing right now. I'm just yep. <laughs> into like history and yep. treasure. And that's probably carried over from the Indiana Jones days as a kid, you know, that kind of yep. stuff. But anything like history related, you know, whether it's world history or U.S. history. Um, yeah, I got into this show, too. It's, a, it's like houses with history. It's like some guys in New England that go around and repair Yep. Houses from the 1600s. I just think it's really cool. You know, I don't know. <laughs> yep. You know, or paranormal stuff. I'm kind of like into that as well. So, well, I can, I can certainly relate to a lot of those things. I also have a 20 year old daughter. However, okay. I never see her anymore. <laughs> She's off and they- living her life now. So, yep. um, the, I, I am a huge, huge, huge Indiana Jones fan. Uh, and I, you know, I belong to a lot of the message boards and, and, you know, when talks, when, you know, it comes to spoilers and everyone's, oh, they were filming this day and that, and they, this yeah. is what, this is the jacket he's wearing on this day. And it's got a bullet hole here. And I'm like, oh, right. come on guys, you're ruining it. I know. I know. I don't look at those either. I mean, yeah. no matter if it's going to be any good or not, I still will watch it. You know? yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm spot. such a fan. I got, ah. the, <laughs> I carry this by my desk all the time. So, nice. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Um, uh, do you have any, you know, favorite is, was there a favorite movie or set that you were working on that stands out at all or show or whatever? Yeah, I feel like, you know, I ha- there's definitely a lot of them. Um, I mean, more recently, I guess, I mean, Spider-Man for sure, just, and yeah. not because of its success, but just, the crew is like the best you can get. Like everybody's on the top of their game. It, the cast was some of the nicest people that I've worked with across the board. And that just makes for such an, a great experience, especially when you're with them for six months, you know, right. That just to me makes all the difference. Um, yeah. Like I, I did a lot of like scary movies with this director, James Wan, like James is a favorite. His, his sets are really challenging but creatively he's really involved in every aspect of it, even with what I do, you know, and I think I've done four movies with them. And so his sets are, they're tough and they're long hours, but they're just a lot of fun and he's great. And I just love doing them. And so there's, I mean, there's a lot of them for different reasons, but the older I get, it's more about just being with nice people, you know, good people that click and you guys get along and and everybody's kind of there to make, make the same thing, you know, and to me, that's what it's all about. I, honestly, I don't really care if they're great movies anymore, as long as they're fun to yeah. work on. I mean, we definitely look at them differently. You know, when you're going to, when you're working on something that's going to be really cool and you know, when you're working on something that's going to be total shit, <laughs> but if it's fun, then the, to me, that's all that matters, you know, and I probably have more crappy movies on my resume than good movies, but you know, like I said, it, it changes over time, you know, so sure. that's, that's, yeah. I just want to be around good people. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. And there's a lot of, I mean, you've got a lot wide variety of <laughs> wide variety of work and styles and all that stuff with the people yeah. you work with and all this stuff. Yeah. The, um, you know, from my, my experience, uh, in filmmaking again, is, is just as a, you know, low budget to no budget filmmaker, stuff like that. I find that, being on set and working with people for a period of time, especially people you really are you know, gelling with and you're, you guys got a system and everyone's really enjoying, you know, hanging out and stuff like that. I find after that, when it's done and I go back home and I'm like, thank God I'm here to be with my family. I also have this, like, I don't want to say depression, but there's this sort of attachment that I'm missing my other family. Now, uh, is that something that you have to deal with on somewhat of a, like the constant up and down of, all right, I'm in this, I'm in this bubble for X time and now I'm pulled out of that bubble type of thing. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a tough, it's tough. I mean, I don't think it's, it's definitely not for everybody. Sure. And I always joke, you know, like with my wife, it's like, when I get off of a job, I I'm coming back into their world. Yeah. Like they have their routine and I'm, it takes me like a couple of weeks to adjust to, their life, you know, because I haven't been around. So I don't know, Oh, this t- what time we're feeding the dogs and I'm feeding them this now. And, you know, this person needs a ride here or has this going on. And 
you're just like, whoa, you know? So I think it's really hard to kind of, you know, get back into civilian life, if you will. Yeah. And then you never know when you're going to get pulled back out of it, you know? So we've made it work. And, um, you know, we've always tried to schedule our family vacations over Christmas break because I know there's no work for those couple weeks. Yep. Obviously with COVID things have been different, you know, but that was kind of always our thing. Cause the minute you plan like a summer vacation, I'm going to get called for a job, you know, um, which is okay. Cause then they can come, you know, if it's during the summer, but yeah, I don't, I don't even know if I answered your question, <laughs> but yeah, it's really, it's yeah. tough. It, it's really tough to try to maintain both of those, you know, and I think it's tougher when you're on a project, if you're away from home, yep. um, and it's like a horrible project, you know, yep. like, you're like, okay, I'm strictly here for the money you know, and you just want to kind of power through it and get back home. You know, I mean, it's different, obviously, if it's a really fun project, it's kind of bittersweet. Like you always want it to end, you know, like your best day is like the first day and the last day, you know what I mean? No matter what it is and it, you know, it all has to come to an end. Sometimes it's bittersweet, but yeah, I think you really just, I, I try to definitely take into account the family time more, you know, like I, was offered a job right after Christmas or some work. And I said, no, and I'm not going to do it. Cause I haven't been home. I already scheduled this the family. I need to do this. We're going to hang out. Yep. And you just kind of have to put your foot down. And I think it's harder probably for younger people or people that are newer to turn down work, but the phone will always ring again, unless you're a total hack, you know, maybe not, but there's always going to be another job, you know, yep. and it took me a really long time to kind of try to find that balance of, you know, you don't have to say yes to everything, you know, and, you know, I, I turn down jobs, even if it's like, you know, slightly less pay than what I'm used to, you know, if it's, if I'm not feeling it and, you know, then I don't do it, you know, I can't always be that selective, but I'm trying to be, you know. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Do you, do you have any, um, plans or anything that you want to achieve in the next couple of years? Are you looking to try other things or anything like that? No, I mean, I'm pretty, I think I'm pretty content with what I do for a living, you know, and my job function. Um, I think if anything work related, like I said, is just to really, I would love to get to a point in the next five years where I can be like really selective on what jobs and, and not only the types of projects, but being a place financially where you can, you know, Oh yeah, I don't have to take every single job, you know, or I want to take a couple months to hang out with the family yep. and go somewhere or just chill around the house. You know, I, I would love to, to be more like that down the road. Nice. Um, but as far as like accomplishments on them, I mean, I'm just, like I said, I'm happy when people call me, you know? <laughs> so yep. if I can, if I'm vertical and I can keep working as long as I can, I'll, I'll be happy with that. So nice. Nice. Yeah. So where do people go to find and see your work? Where are you on social medias? I, I mean, I know you're on Instagram and stuff like that. Yeah. Instagram is pretty much it. You know, that's where they can, you know, see what I'm doing as far as work. And uh, yeah, really, I, I mean, my website, which is kennedystills.net, but it's the same stuff that's on Instagram pretty much. Okay. Now. And what is your Instagram? What's your, what's your, uh, at title? Kennedy stills. Okay. At Kennedy yeah. stills on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, and, I, and you, I mean, your website, I mean, you've got some awesome, awesome photos in there. And for example, just the Spider-Man note, I mean, you've got some cool, cool stuff. I mean, <laughs> I don't want to say anything, but I mean, just looking at, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the shot of Tom with the camera and the boom operator over his head and stuff like that. I mean, oh, it's right. just so cool to see this stuff in the behind the scenes shots. And I'm assuming as I'm looking through this, I see, you know, you see Spider-Man on, on top of a car, you see Dr. Strange in the background. I'm assuming your shot, or oh, that's from uh, entertainment weekly. I, so you, I'm assuming your shot can go out to marketing places such as entertainment weekly and stuff like yeah, that. A lot of times people like entertainment weekly, they'll kind of have like an, uh, like an embargo or they'll have a first look deal with the, studio for whatever film it is. Yep. So they'll get the first, I think they were the first ones to release images yep. for Spider-Man. And, yep. uh, you know, and then after they have it released for a week or whatever, then everybody else can kind of pick it up. So. Yeah. And these are all, 
to me, they look spoiler free. So you they don't are. have to worry I about mean, <laughs> I don't know if when, if and when they'll ever release this, the spoilery images. Yeah, I mean, at some yeah. point they have to. I mean, people are going to want to see stuff, but probably not. Yeah. As long as it's making money in the theaters, I don't think they will. You know. Yeah, probably not till DVD type of the home video. Yeah, thing. probably yeah. once it's like done its journey around the planet. You know, yep. picked up as many coins, then they'll maybe release some more stuff. So, and, and, and uh, you know, again, this. I mean, I'm looking at the Black Panther. Some of these shots are just incredible with the sunset uh, uh, and silhouetting of some of these shots. You know, and, and Chad, did you get to hang out with Chad much? I mean, a little bit. He was yeah. he was quiet. You know, I did three movies with him, so yeah. he's just a he was just a really kind of you know quiet, just the sweetest guy. You know, yeah, we would talk, and you know, I mean, we had some nice conversations, and he's just a really. But I'm not that guy too that needs to be like best friends with the actors. I kind sure, of just try sure. to let it happen naturally. You know, and obviously, as you do projects together, you kind of build up a, a rapport. And he was just a sweet dude. Yeah. So, well, I highly recommend everyone go check out. Oh, the uh, and that's the shot you was talking about um, with Tom looking over the balcony or whatever into the. Um, it's right on your front page there. Yeah, the the Russian poster. Yeah. 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 So I highly recommend if uh, you want to see some cool photos, go check out your site. I it, appreciate uh, it. it. These are cool. I, obviously, you, I'm going to assume you cannot sell any of these prints. No, I wish. Uh, they, <laughs> yeah. uh, dude, there would be some great prints to have on the wall. That's for sure. Yeah. 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 Now, we're definitely, you know, hired guns. Yeah, so understood. The studio owns everything, but it's, it's okay. And, you yeah. know, that's, I guess, you know, people – Ask me, aren't you bummed that people don't know who you are? And I'm like, not really. I mean, I'm happy with what I'm doing. And I mean, when you think about it, I think probably unit photographers are probably some of the most well-seen images around the world than any other photographer. They just don't know who we are. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's kind of like a ghostwriter, right? Yeah. I mean, obviously, I don't want any kind of fame or anything, but it is nice to get photo credit, though. <laughs> <laughs> which we yeah. always we don't always you know it's kind of it kind of blows me away sometimes that they don't give us photo credit so yeah uh and and, I, and i'm assuming you will see your work all over the place in oh, so yeah. many variations and yeah. people making things out of them and all that oh stuff. yeah it's crazy and then you know a lot of times actors will repost our photos and it, it just kind of makes me giggle because like you know Maybe like if it's Tom, he'll repost a photo that I took, you know, and I'm not asking him to give me credit. I don't care. But then somebody else will pick it up and they say photo yeah. by Tom Holland. I'm like, well, yeah. he, he couldn't take it. He's in it. You know, it's just kind of, <laughs> it is what it is. It's like the I said, same. Yeah. I, I got paid and people are enjoying the images and that's really all that matters. So you know. with social media, it's so hard. Yeah. And this is the same thing that in the music industry as well. So I'll take shots for, specific you know venue or article or band or whatever and then someone in the band will reshare it and then someone else you know it's the same as x scenario just all of a sudden next thing you know it's everyone's you know ringtone and uh, not ringtone but uh background wallpaper or whatever and like yeah you know and no one ever says hey this was taken by so-and-so or anything like that so yeah it's across but the board. It really is. But my friends and I will do that for each other. Like if somebody will post it, we'll then we'll tag the guy yep. that we know took the photo on there. And sometimes it matters. Sometimes it doesn't, but yeah, yeah, it, does I, it is what it is. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so. Well, I can, you know, this has been a really, really awesome uh, for me episode to be able to talk to you and see all this stuff and learn about your experiences. Uh, and, you know, like I said, these images are really, really cool. I highly recommend people check them out. Uh, dude, I can't thank you enough for joining us tonight. No, man, my pleasure. I appreciate it. It was good yeah. to chat for sure. Um, and, you know, hopefully, you know, maybe in the next couple of years, next year or two, when you have a few other of these things that are out, we can physically talk about. You can come back. We can talk about some of those other ones too. Yeah, I'd love to. And if yeah, I'm ever awesome. out in uh, New England again anytime soon, I'll hit you up. Awesome. Well, yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Definitely let me know. Hey, thanks for watching our episode with Matt Kennedy. We hope you enjoyed it. You can check out this episode and many other episodes on our YouTube page, on your favorite podcast location. Just search for Tales from the Pit photo and on talesfromthepit.net. We'll see you next time.